Hi there. Now this is the second video in my series on adding and subtracting algebraic fractions. I'm assuming that you looked at the first video where I took you through the methods involved when we had fractions that had one term in the denominator. Now in this particular video I'm just going to extend that work where we've now got two terms or more terms in the denominators. So how do we do this? Well remember in that first video in the series I showed you that what we needed to do was find out what the lowest common multiple was for the denominators, the values in the denominators. And for this one here, we can see that we've got 3 over x minus 4 minus 2. We can think of this as 2 over 1. And we would put that this is identical to, as opposed to equals, and we would select the common denominator, the lowest common denominator, to be x minus 4. So we'd say, what do we multiply x minus 4 with? to give me x minus 4? Well, it's got to be just 1. So it multiply the top, the numerator here, also by 1. And then for this one here, the minus 2, this is minus 2 over 1. So what would I multiply the 1 here by to give me x minus 4? Will it be x minus 4? So I'd have minus 2 multiplied by x minus 4. So I'm assuming, as I say, that you've seen the previous video and that you've been able to follow this concept. So expanding this, we've got 3 times 1, which is 3, and then we've got minus 2x, and then minus 2 times minus 4 is plus 8, and that is all divided by x minus 4. And we can simplify this further. We can say this is identical to, and we've got 3 plus 8, which is 11. And so we have 11 minus the 2x, and that is divided by x minus 4. Always check to see whether the numerator factorizes. You never know. If it does, then always try and factorize it. This one doesn't factorize any further, so we can just leave it. Now in this example, we've got in this fraction here a denominator with three terms, x squared, then the 4x, then the plus 3. Now always check to see whether anything in the denominators factorizes. And in this example, x squared plus 4x plus 3 does factorize. So what I'm going to say then, first of all, is to copy this fraction down here, that's 3 divided by x plus 1. But then for this fraction here, it's going to be minus 2. And if we factorize the denominator, it factorizes into two brackets. In front of the brackets, you're going to get an x and an x to give us x squared. And then for the plus 3, it's going to be plus 3 times plus 1. Plus 3 times plus 1. And you can check it out that you get 3x plus 1x when it's multiplied out, giving the 4x. Now with this, we can see that when it comes to writing down the lowest common multiple, x plus 1 is already a factor of x plus 3 times x plus 1. So the lowest common multiple that I need here is the x plus 3 and the x plus 1. I don't need to say x plus 1 times another x plus 1. It's already, as I say, a factor of this. So what do I need to multiply this denominator here, x plus 1 by, to give me this denominator? Well, it's just x plus 3. So I multiply the numerator, 3, with the x plus 3. Now we have minus 2, and I say, what do I multiply this denominator by to give me this denominator? Well, it's just 1, so I'm just going to have minus 2 times 1, still really minus 2. So when I 
simplify this further. On the top here, I've got 3 times x, which is 3x. And then I've got 3 times 3, which is 9, minus the 2. Well, that's going to be plus 7. And all this is divided by x plus 3 multiplied with the x plus 1. OK. Now, with this example, I've picked this example because we're back to three terms now. And with this one, just look carefully at that x squared minus 9 before you start. But you might like to have a go at this one. And if so, I'll just give you a moment to pause the video. And when you come back, you can check your working against mine. OK, welcome back then if you had a go. Now I did say be careful with the x squared minus 9 here because this factorises. It's what we call the difference of two squares. It factorises to x minus 3, x plus 3. So um, before we start, I'm just going to write down these two fractions here at the front. 1 over x plus 2 over x minus 3. And then for the last fraction, we'll just split that into its factors. So it's minus 4, all divided by x plus 3 multiplied with x minus 3. Let's just extend that line a bit there. So when it comes to finding out the lowest common multiple of x, x minus 3, and x plus 3 times x minus 3, well, what do I need? Well, I certainly need this x here because it's not in any of these other f fractions there, so we'll put an x down. I need an x minus 3, so I'll put an x minus 3 down. And for this denominator here, well, I've already got the x minus 3. I just need the x plus 3 there, so I'll put the x plus 3. OK? Now, we run through by saying, what do we multiply x by to get this denominator? So it's x minus 3 times x plus 3. So it's going to be 1 multiplied by x minus 3 times x plus 3. Then for the next fraction, what do I multiply the x minus 3 to give me this denominator? It's going to be that x and that x plus 3. So it's going to be plus 2 times the x times the x plus 3. Now lastly, for this fraction, what do I multiply this denominator by to give me this denominator? Well, it's just the x. So I need to multiply the minus 4 with the x, so we get minus 4x. And simplifying this, well, for this term here on the top, x minus 3 times x plus 3 is x squared minus 9. Multiply it with the 1 and you've still got x squared minus 9. Expanding this bracket out, you've got plus 2x times x, that's plus 2x squared. And you've got plus 2x times 3, which is plus 6x. And then you've got the minus 4x on the end. Remember, never expand the brackets out in the denominator here. Just leave them as they are. That's x times x minus 3 times x plus 3. And cleaning the top up here, we've got x squared and 2x squared, which is 3x squared. We've got, for the x term, 6x minus 4x, which is plus 2x. And then we're left with the constant minus 9. And that's all divided then by x times x minus 3 times x plus 3. Do check out to see whether the top factorises again. But in this example, it doesn't. So it'll be just left like that. OK, so I hope that's given you some idea how to go about these types of problems, where we've got more than one term in the denominator. Always see if they factorise, and if they do, split them into the factors, and then proceed as usual, trying to find the lowest common multiple.